The Menticide Manual Deceit Deceit is the giving of false advice. The false advice is concocted to put a rival at a disadvantage and send him down a perilous path of defeat and humiliation. The deceitful person knows for a fact that his advice is dishonest. Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger The Austrian-born bodybuilder, movie actor and former governor of California, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, once described the deceitful mind games he used to play with much less famous bodybuilder competitors in the now legendary 1977 documentary Pumping Iron. This is what Mr. Schwarzenegger said about his rival and competitor, Lou Ferrigno. At the day of the contest, if he, Lou, comes in his best shape, or if he is a few percent better as I am, I spent with him one night. I go downstairs with him and put us together in a room to help us for tomorrow's contest, and that night he will never forget. I will mix him up. He is ready to lose. I will talk him into that, no problem. About rival and competitor, Franco Columbu, Mr. Schwarzenegger had this to say. Franco is pretty smart, but Franco is a child. And when it comes to the day of the contest, I am his father. He comes to me for advice. So it is not that hard for me to give him the wrong advice. Receiving the wrong advice from a deceitful father figure or your favorite sports idol can be catastrophic for your future career. Mr. Schwarzenegger's life is plastered with deceit. He left California a third world shithole and he cuckled at a fifth child with a housemaid. Earlier than that, when he wanted to become an American citizen, he praised America's freedom. When he got everything he wanted out of it, he spit on America, fuck your freedom. But this is not to disgrace Mr. Schwarzenegger's moral creativity. In fact, this is to enlighten his audiences. Mr. Schwarzenegger deceived hundreds of millions of bodybuilder fans over his obvious use of steroids. Try to imagine yourself in your double XL man's tank top pulling barbells at Joe Weider's Gold's Gym in Venice Beach in the 70s as the helmsman for a multi-billion dollar fitness industry. You took steroids, testosterone, male hormones, to grow an unnatural size. Then you tell your fans on the telly, it is all in those barbells, which is what they see. You should also try it. Why, you are not seeing results? Then, try harder. Mr. Schwarzenegger and all his bodybuilder friends in the universe know that barbells are not enough and that they must inject growth hormones to artificially stimulate muscle growth. That is why no bodybuilder could ever pass a blood test or urine sample over anabolic drugs for, say, competing in the Olympic Games. But that does not deter steroids users, who simply invented their own Mr. Olympia title and handed it to Mr. Schwarzenegger no less than seven times. Anyways, this is the Menticide Manual's chapter on deceit. Did you like those Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger anecdotes I just used to explain deceit? Yeah, I wonder if he's going to become more relevant later. Moral Dilemmas Before we can understand why deceit is king, we must first understand why honesty is peasant. Consider the following moral dilemma proposed by grand philosopher Immanuel Kant. I just modernized the theme a little bit because Kant wrote in 1780. Imagine in 1980, Michael Jackson came running towards you and said, there was an angry mob of parents who wanted to lynch him. Please do not tell them which way Michael Jackson ran. Now the angry mob of parents come your way and ask you which way Michael Jackson went. You could say nothing, and they could beat you for the truth. You could lie and send them the wrong way. Or you could tell them the truth. And here is the solution. If you are a superior person, if you have the mindset of a king, then telling the truth is the worst decision you can make. Not only are you a bad person and can never be trusted for snitching, but you also got Michael Jackson lynched and his wonderful legacy ruined. Deceitful Emmanuel Kant was unimpressed, you must never be dishonest, he taunted the peasants, you must always speak the truth. Now, this I can't stands for Western moral philosophy in a nutshell, and our peasant concept of the truth is of course heavily biased by Virgin Maria and Yabi Jesus, the unemployable son of a carpenter and whatnot. Good Christians basically should never lie, because it is bad, bad, sinfully bad. This truth cult is what another great philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, 
later ridiculed as slave morality but we here shall refer to it as peasant mentality. And so, Immanuel Kant to this day in our universities is hailed as the greatest moral philosopher of all time, blending Christian theology with Greek fascism. But what about the far more noble moral codes in the world? If Christianity conveys the peasant mentality, then Hinduism, Confucianism, Taoism and Buddhism convey the mentality of superior men. In the Hindu Mahabharata, an idiot priest who bragged to King Krishna about always speaking the truth went straight to hell. Why? Because this is the logical consequence of dharma or duty. A superior person must always weight his duties against idiotic, inflexible moral fascism. The Analects of Confucius convey the most flexible morals for superior men, and are thus considered the gold standard for grooming elites. And so does the Tao Te Ching by the way, the Book of Tao, which informs us that power is like water, adaptable and flexible. These morals are excellent. These are the morals of superior gentlemen or kings, not the morals of unemployed woodworker, social parasites or virgin mothers. The Mahabharata, the Analects of Confucius and the Tao Te Ching are instruction manuals on how to become excellent and reign over the gullible peasants. As to Siddhartha Buddha, I mean, come on, he is highborn, wealthy as fuck and a true king. Buddhism is the motherload of deception. It is all about dharma, duty, and maya, pretense, and prajna, intelligence, and the blissful floating in six heavens and whatnot. In all those superior moral teachings, Michael Jackson would be perfectly safe, because what is it your business that he liked little boys, I mean, compared to the joy and happiness of his pop songs beat it or they don't care about us. Mr. Lance Armstrong Superior men at the top levels, whether it is our modern king's courts, fake democracies, diplomats, top cadre, and scientists and opinion leaders, have the duty to deceive us. In the West, we have born kings and aristocracy. Our elites are Jewish or capitalists or read Machiavelli or join the Freemasons. Sure they may pretend to be good Christians if that helps. But it is what it is, deceit. Since we already mentioned the honest priest in the Mahabharata who went straight to hell because, hey, who can rely on him? Here is another example of what happens to truthful idiots. Further down in the epic storyline, Prince Arjuna is supposed to be the greatest archer of the universe, trained by the greatest guru of archery in the universe, who train together every day. Then, one morning, there comes this rival idiot archer Eklivia out of the forest. He had carved himself a wooden idol as a substitute archery guru and practiced archery all by himself. And guess what? Peasant Eklivia came in his best shape and he was a few percent better than Arjuna. So Arjuna and his guru went downstairs with him and helped him for tomorrow's contest. They mixed him up. They told him about the universe and his negligible role in it. They told him to cut off his thumb. Eklivia was ready to lose. Cutting off your thumb seems really bad advice for a rival archer. But I want you to think about your own life for a moment. From the point of view of Prince Arjuna and his guru, they had to use deceit. Deceit is absolutely necessary for the reigning champ, so what were Eklivia's chances? He was not meant to be the leading man in this story. Are you, I mean you, meant to be the leading man in anything? How many self-destructive, disabling advice have your betters bestowed upon you already? I bet they had you cut off your thumbs and toes and limbs, and poke out your eyes. It's a metaphor, tell the truth. Study hard. Be nice to women. Work. Pay taxes. Hail the king. Bad advice is that we're meant to knock yourself out and quit the race to the top. Mr. Lance Armstrong is one of the greatest deceivers in sports history. Until he retired in 2005, he had won at least seven Tour de France cycling titles, which is considered a superhuman accomplishment, given that this is a sport that is notoriously plagued by cheating and doping. But not Armstrong, no. Not him. He was cycling's most trusted and clean champ. Now, remember that this is the Western Hemisphere, where the peasants already believe in Virgin Mother Mary, the God-Pope messenger crap, Immanuel Kant and zero steroid Schwarzenegger actors. So of course, they'll worship this totally doping freelance Armstrong in cycling. Actually, 
Mr. Armstrong pulled of a God-level deceit. Not only did he not use dope, but he was also handicapped. Imagine that, Mr. Armstrong survived nut cancer and carpet bomb cancer in. Wait for it. His lymph nodes, his lungs, his brains and his abdomen. But don't worry, he still had five children with his remaining nut, and won every tournament only using his left leg, and you, sir, are a true idiot. Of course, Mr. Armstrong denied deceit because he had all those book deals, movie deals, made billions for the cycling industry and cancer research, and so they let him win his seventh Tour de France. After all was said and done, he finally said yes, I doped. All the time. Since he was 21 in fact. So what? He said, everyone dopes. The best advice Mr. Armstrong has ever given can be found on YouTube, it is. Scale. Scale every morning, so you know your weight. Go and do that, peasants. Mr. Diego Maradona Deceit is the first duty of any role model. Take the soccer world. In the 1986 World Cup soccer quarter-final between England and Argentina, short but creative star player Diego Maradona leapt into the air and fist-punched the high cross ball into the English goal. He immediately ran to the sideline and celebrated his bogus goal, so his teammates joined the celebration, followed by half of the stadium. The referee was so mixed up, he readily believed the cheat. The referee counted the goal, and Argentina won the match. When Mr. Maradona was later asked in an interview, how on earth could you get away with it? The short man smirked and said it wasn't his fist but the hand of God that scored the goal, and that it was not his fault if the idiot referee fell for it. And because of this deceit, Mr. Diego Maradona is considered the greatest soccer player of all time. Every one of them, from Mr. Schwarzenegger to Mr. Armstrong and Mr. Maradona, openly deceived the masses, because it is absolutely expected of superior men to deceive the masses and humiliate their rivals, no matter how. An Industry of Deceit As Sun Tzu wrote in his Art of War, all warfare is based on deception. And sports is a form of warfare. It is probably time to shred your childhood illusions. You have been deceived. That is why Michael Schumacher won seven consecutive titles in Formula One races, and that is why Yokozuna Asashoryu won 25 sumo tournaments, and that is why Muhammad Ali defended his boxing world championship title 19 times. Once a champion rises, he will be tested whether he is corrupt to the highest standard of the industry. Of course he has to be good at what he is doing, no question. But there are so many people on earth and talent is cheap. The winner usually takes all, and the true question for their entire sport is this, is this a man of superior morality? If so, his rivals will magically step into the brakes, they will accidentally trip over their own feet or, if they still didn't get the memo, they will be taken downstairs in a room to help them for tomorrow's contest. And while millions of clueless fans mindlessly pump barbells, watch soccer porn, or wish they could defeat nut cancer with a scale, we are now so advanced in the deceit department that we don't even need real athletes no more to deceive the peasants. Good actors will do the job. A perfect example of engineered deceit in sports is the 1986 Cold War propaganda movie Rocky IV. In this epic Hollywood blockbuster, American boxer Rocky Balboa, played by Sylvester Stallone, faces the indestructible Soviet boxer Ivan Drago, played by Dolph Lundgren, a Swedish man. The first and obvious dimension of deceit is with the athletes, there are no real boxers in this movie. Those are actors. Nothing of the boxing is real. It is acted. But now realize this, it worked even better than with real athletes. That is because real athletes can cause moral hazards. Scripted athletes won't. In fact, Rocky posters hung all over teenage walls and boxing clubs in the 80s and 90s. But it is the political dimension of deceit that really takes the mickey out of engineered deception. Here, the honest and fair, play by the rules capitalist Rocky Balboa, there, the deceitful, play dirty and cheating socialist Ivan Drago. Drago is a word play on Draco, which is dragon. Your average preteen son has all figured that out by himself. That Russian is a monster, dad. The roles were completely reversed in the script for maximal peasant mentality, 
while the Soviet Union in reality was dirt poor and only five years away from total economic collapse, it was depicted in this movie as a super advanced high tech gymnasium with genetically improved boxers who take hormone jabs for breakfast. And while the United States in reality was super advanced and high tech, and the actor of Rocky once caught with illegal steroids at an Australian airport, in this movie it was downplayed as the underdog with Rocky reconnecting to nature and him lifting snow carts and lumber logs in the wilderness. Conclusion Deceit, the giving of false advice that we know will not work for the peasants, let alone rivals and competitors, is going to stay with us. And the deceit is getting massive, because we are now 8 billion peasants. When Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger won his first Mr. Olympia title in 1970, you probably thought he had to compete against hundreds, if not thousands in the world. But no. There was just him and two others. Not Lou and Franco though, but Sergio and Reg. And we wonder. Was all he had to do was go downstairs with them together in a room and mix them up, and they were ready to lose.